Okay, so in a recent Pi News, I showed a Pi Zero 2W adapter to Pi 3. And uh, I ended up looking around and I found one that converts to Pi 4. Kind of converts to Pi 4. You can see it's inside an official Raspberry Pi 4 case. The lid does fit on fine, but just so I can do this, I've got it loose. And uh, you can see inside, I'm using a Pi Moroni fan shim to cool it. Uh, it's powered by USB-C instead of micro USB and we also have four USB ports and an Ethernet socket. It is a really cool adapter. So there's a lot of choice of this sort of board about for the Zero and the Zero 2W. And this one from Waveshare has four USB 2 sockets and an Ethernet socket. Uh, but they call it uh, a Pi 3B converter because it's got a full size HDMI, but it also has micro USB. And I'm not a big fan of micro USB. Uh, I really liked the fact that the one I bought has USB-C to power it. Uh, but if we have a look at another one on Amazon, and by the way, I'm on the Pi Zero at the moment. I'm using the Puffin browser. That's why it works reasonably well uh, with only 512 meg of RAM. Uh, so yeah, this board is a different take on it. So uh, this doesn't sort of slot together in the same way. You've got these little pins here. Uh, so you obviously screw the board onto it. And connectivity wise, if I scroll up a bit, same sort of thing. So Ethernet, uh, four USB 2, uh, full size HDMI and micro again. And this little adapter, I'm not quite sure where that goes. It looks like it fits in there. So there must be an adapter to fit the two together. So maybe not as neat as the one I've got. I'll find whatever boards I can find. I'll put links in the description. So this one from AliExpress, there's actually three on this one and they're all different. Uh, so the first one is a 0 to 3B adapter, and you can see that it's got four USB 2s, but no Ethernet. So if you're going to use it on Wi-Fi, maybe you'd choose that because you end up with more USBs. But this also has full-size HDMI and micro USB, so very nice. The next one is the one that has an Ethernet, but then they don't give you this particular USB 2 socket. So you only have three USB-A sockets, which is, which is pretty good anyway. Uh, again, we're using full-size HDMI and micro USB. But this one is the proper 0 to 4B one. So this has USB-C. It's got HDMI. It's got two micro HDMI sockets, but one actually doesn't work. Uh, and that's because the Pi Zero 2W doesn't support dual display outputs. Uh, but if we go up to the picture as well, the top left USB socket doesn't work. So we've got USB 1, 2, and 3, uh, and we've also got an Ethernet function. But I, I just think it's really cool. I love the way it fits into the Pi 4 cases. Uh, I decided not to get the Pi 3 one because I haven't got any Pi 3 cases. I've never had a Pi 3, uh, and this was going to fit with more things that I wanted to do. So if I unplug everything, so USB-C, micro HDMI, uh, this is the USB stick, uh, which is a Samsung bar I was running the operating system from. It's actually faster than an SD card. Little USB dongle for mouse keyboard. Then we've got the Ethernet connection. And just to show you the lid on this official Pi 4B case slots into place. Uh, and you can see all the connections look fine. Uh, everything is exactly as it is on a Pi 4B, but uh, you don't get a headphone jack, although you could plug in a USB sound card and give yourself microphone and headphone. Uh, obviously the performance isn't going to be as good as a Pi 4B uh, because the processor is slower and also it only has 512 RAM on a Pi Zero 2W, but it still is a great board. So if you are going to use the SD card slot, if I take this little Pi Moroni fan shim off, uh, which is designed for a Pi 4B, but obviously because everything's in the same place, even all the little hole uh, that keeps it in place is all exactly the same. And also this is cooling most of the board. So uh, it's going to be effective on this, although lots of cases, especially cases where they actually touch the CPU, uh, it's obviously in a different place uh, and it's a different height and various things like that. So don't go uh, screwing this into just any old Pi 4B case. Check that you're not going to do any damage to it, uh, first of all. But yeah, SD card slot you can see is here. Uh, so it's very central. Uh, it's right in the middle on a Pi 4B. Uh, whereas on this it's off on the side because it's on a zero. Now I'm not going to take the board apart, but all you do is just push the Pi Zero together where the micro USBs meet 
and the mini HDMI, but it is an incredibly tight fit. So probably to get it apart, I would put some spudges in here and just sort of twist. So I'm I'm pulling it straight out, but it is it's not coming apart very easily. And uh, as I've got other Pi Zero 2Ws, I don't really need to take this apart. Uh, from the bottom, it's nice and flush. You can see there's not really anything protruding from the bottom part of it. Uh, obviously, this Zero 2W has got GPIO pins, but you might have one that hasn't got GPIO pins. And if you don't intend to use them, then there's no need to put them on and it will be even more flush. So it's not really suitable for use with passively cooled cases like these DeSalvos. They are perfect for the Pi 4B because they're actually engineered to fit it. Same with this Maze Pro. Uh, so they have part of the inside of them and you can have a look back at any of these videos because I've covered all of them in separate videos. Uh, basically that goes directly onto the CPU, in some cases directly onto the RAM. Various different bits that get hot on the Pi 4 uh, so strategically placed. So these are all out. I thought that this copper plate might be adaptable. So although these raised bits will be in the wrong place, because it uses these sort of uh, sticky thermal pads, you could just sort of layer up the pads and, and I'm sure it'd be an effective cooling. But this has an extra bit on the back. So where this goes over a Pi 4B, uh, it stops here. So under here, if I take this off, you can see there's some pins. And if we look really closely, it says USB 1.0. So I'm not quite sure uh, what you use that for. I, didn't, I don't think I had an instruction, but I might have had a QR code. So maybe I'll have a look at that another time. But um, yeah, so that stops that sort of thing from working. The Dixon's Industries cooler is, uh, I've actually used this on the Pi Zero 2W by just resting it on top of the uh, CPU. But with pads in the right place, actually this is a very effective cooler. So you could use that, but obviously there isn't a way of securing it without 3D printing or making something to specifically fit on there. The Nest Pi 4 case would probably work because it uses all the existing ports to create other ports on the outside of it and also gives you a SATA connection. Um, yeah, I think that probably would work all right. These don't work. Uh, these are the ones that give you full size HDMI and uh, a bit of fan cooling and everything. But because that three and a half mil jack goes out straight and in line with the board, uh, there is no provision for it on this board. Uh, you'd probably have to cut a bit of this board out and I don't know, yeah, it looks like there's definitely circuitry in the way. So yeah, you, you definitely wouldn't use that case with it. And the Ice Tower cooler, um, again, so engineered for fitting onto the Pi 4 or Pi 3 with different adapters. Uh, you're going to struggle because that CPU is in a different place. So active cooling is definitely the easiest way. Obviously this is quite a big case for a Pi Zero, but it would definitely work with this because all of the holes are in exactly the same place. All of these bits are in exactly the same place as well. Uh, you could probably even use this M.2 drive in the bottom here. Uh, again, you know, it's a bit overkill for a Zero 2W, but yeah, I think this would actually work apart from the cooler. Um, so you would have to use the fan, but there is an active fan which uh, actually goes on the outside casing. So you could definitely do it in something like this. So if you've got an old case that you're not using that is this sort of style, I think you'd be absolutely fine. And again, it would work with my 52 Pi case just the same. Uh, in fact, actually, because that uses a big fan on the back, uh, that would definitely work with the Zero 2W. Now, the Pi 4B struggles if you plug too many USB devices in that consume a lot of power. Uh, it's fine with mouse, keyboard, and various different things like that. But if you plug in several different USB 3 drives, so like SSDs or uh, mechanical drives, it often crashes. So I thought I'd see what would happen uh, obviously, I've got three USB ports on this. I'm not going to use this mouse keyboard because this uses a dongle. So I'm going to set up a Bluetooth keyboard uh, and then I'm going to plug in, uh, well, one at a time. Uh, so I'm running the operating system from an SD card, Raspberry Pi OS, uh, and I'm going to plug in a drive, see if it works, plug in another drive, see if it works, plug in another drive. If we can get three drives working, I would say that would be better than the Pi 4 for being able to handle the power. Um, but uh, it also might work because this is only using USB 2, whereas USB 3 consumes more power, but we'll give it a try anyway. Okay, so first up, this crucial 240 gig SSD drive, which is the one I use as my main operating system with KDE Plasma. So let's plug that in and uh, it will show up as a drive on here. You can see it showing up and it says open in file manager. Let's just, uh, in fact, let's close that down 
and hit cancel on both of these because we'll have a look at it in a minute with screen capture. So boot and root are showing up. Then we have an M.2 drive. Uh, so this is a 120 gig Kingston M.2 drive in an Argon One case. Let's plug that in as well and see if it, yeah, it shows up nice and quick. Open in file manager, so let's hit cancel on that. So that's two drives already. Now I would say at this stage, the Pi 4 usually handles that, um, but I would generally plug them into one into USB 3 and one into USB 2. But I would say my Pi 4 would not be able to handle having this old mechanical drive plugged in because they use quite a bit of power. Uh, they take a bit more time to show up. Can't use the top left socket because that doesn't work. So we use the top right socket. And I know that doesn't work from the specs. It's not a case of it's, it's faulty or anything. So I plugged it in, the light is flashing. Oh, it came up quite quick actually. Uh, and yeah, all the drives are showing. So let's go into screen capture so I can show you this in a bit more detail. So let's start that. Okay, so let's click on this 500 gig drive first of all. So that comes up. So this has got loads of ROMs on it for Recall Box or RetroPies. So what we could do is try and copy one of these ROMs over. So ROMs. So let's go into something with a reasonable size. Uh, so something like PlayStation 1 maybe. Yeah, here we go. I'm guessing we've got some ROMs in there. Just thinking about it. Yeah, so let's just pick FIFA 2002. Uh, so if we right click on that and properties. So that is 490 megabytes. So that's a reasonable size. Uh, so yeah, right click and copy. And then let's try and copy it over to the M.2 drive, uh, which I think I've got nothing on because I was using it for speed testing. So if I right click and paste, and that's copying over. And while that's copying over, if I was to, well, in fact, it's going pretty quick. Look, it's only going to take about 20 seconds or so. Uh, well, let's have a look in the root drive of my uh, KDE Plasma build. So if I go home, and Pi and desktop. I'm not sure if I've got much on my desktop. No, it doesn't look like I've got anything in my desktop. Uh, probably pictures there'll be something in. So I would imagine I'll have some wallpaper in there. Uh, yeah, so there's a wallpaper here. So let's double click on that to see that that's working all right. Yeah, that's working fine. So it's they are plugged in via USB 2, but I think that's pretty impressive. And as you, I think you can see by the speed, it's quite usable for, for basic tasks, you know, the 500 megabyte file, a lot of people don't deal with anything like as big as that. So let's close all that down. Yeah, very impressed. So all the drives work as they should. The Ethernet, I've already been testing for days and that's absolutely fine as well. So if I just eject all of these drives. So I'm really pleased with the way this has turned out. It is a much nicer way of using a 02W, especially if you plug extra things into it. So my previous videos have often been about these on-the-go adapters, which have got multiple USB connections in them. But uh, they're still using micro USB. And uh, yeah, they're definitely not as neat a solution as this. And they still don't have Ethernet. And it's really nice to have Ethernet. I generally use Ethernet all the time. So yeah, really happy with that. Uh, as I say, I bought this. I wasn't given it for a review. Uh, but I've got another idea for it. But I'll do that in another video. Because this video has gone on for a while already. Okay, so thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.